readings. This is um, Eagle Part 5. We're talking about heads of movements and the crowns people want to wear in their authority field when they trade on their names and claim, and some authentically to be under the famous pastor, leader, and usually the biggest Alexander the Coppersmith to me <clears throat> for this movement in my life has been, well, Western European Levitical Patriarchy. So, of course, I st I've studied it. It got my attention. <laughs> How? I just sat there and it came after me. I'm going to go back um, not too far. You know, my dad was a pastor. Baptists don't do that. He went Levitical Patriarch. He respected my mother equally, wasn't racist, and he was like low key. If you middle income, if you feel like God says to do it, do it. You know, like that was the understatement of my family. We're Bible scholars, no Bavarians, and pretty humorous and respectful. So with that in mind, sort of Billy Graham type meets the Jesus people. Then I got out on my own, and the Lord called me at age 24 to study the body of Christ, the movements, when he led me. And I was, it was 1976, at the beginning of, this is the big deal, charismatic renewal, which is, if you look at what's online, all the baptisms around the world, all the people in different countries, people just getting baptized, and all ages, revivals going on. It was that like. And what I've experienced, God showed me, you know, led me through evolving and getting more and more dysfunctional, the LP and their rigid stronghold of accusation and being uptight with different kinds that don't look like them. Not all. So you got to not, you know, bias against them and just take each one individually, but watch out. It really concerns me on behalf of these people that are just meeting the Lord fresh that they could be sucked in, drawn in, used, and territorially turf-protected, slave-owned, taught wrong by false teaching. Get into the Holy Spirit mixture of occult white witchcraft. That is why. So when I'm meeting people, and I'm meeting people traditional, it's a relief right now after all these years. Thank God for normal, you know. It's people outside in the Barista Fellowship. This is an Acts 17, 17 ministry like Paul, just talking with people as he leads us in the synagogue, so to speak, and in the Barista Fellowship of the day, you know, as people come and go. That's part of it. Then the rest of it is, you know, out there. But you just know how nice so many remnant there are, how many quality people that are not like that, that are good folk, good neighbors and servant leadership of all races, all credos, and they're not all Baptists or charismatic. They're Catholic, all these different kinds. And I respect everybody, even not Christians, but I'm talking to the Christian so you don't go there. This is not your turf. This is the Lord's day. We've, You know, it's his time. So it's not the time for dysfunction. So when I get very, very descriptive, I always honor the pastors that are there before me, the proven ones, the people that are head of movements. But I value each one to let them know and inform them that they have no clue what we see and have seen and have kept on seeing, especially LP, in the last 30, 40 years. It was not until the Lord led me from studying, you know, on my journey, the more milder, joyful word of faith at the beginning the people that were, you know, I learned different things. 